Hello and welcome to this University of Hertfordshire virtual open day presentation. Today I'm going to talk to you about the undergraduate program Computer Science and Information Technology. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Sue Atwood and I am an admissions tutor and lecturer in the School of Engineering and Computer Science. Before I get into the detailed structure of the program, I'd just like to begin by talking about some of the fascinating applications of computing that demonstrate the vast range that this subject encompasses. For the first of my three examples, I'm going to talk about assistive robots. The school has a strong research program dedicated to assistive robots, and that includes research aimed at supporting children with type 1 diabetes. Meet Robin, the robot with type 1 diabetes. During interactions with children, Robin will simulate the symptoms of a hyper or hypoglycemic attack. The children are asked to check his blood sugar levels and take the appropriate action. Robin wants to play with toys, dances, gets tired and asks for hugs, behaviours that most toddlers exhibit. The developers of Robin the robot believe that this relatability is important in teaching children to remember to treat their diabetes whilst also boosting their confidence. The next example I want to talk about is quantum computing. Quantum computers replace binary bits with qubits. Qubits can be on, off, somewhere in between, all at the same time. This superposition of states enables qubit-based computers to carry out far more calculations much faster. This is a picture of a quantum computer, by the way, which I'm sure is nothing like anything you've seen on your desk or your laptop. Now for something a little closer to home, and that is the concept of the Internet of Things. And this refers to the levels of connectivity we now have between what we would have considered traditionally dumb or non-internet enabled devices. Okay, so imagine a scenario where you have left work, you're on your way home, and you're thinking about what you want to eat to, for dinner tonight, and you think, oh, quite fancy spaghetti carbonara. What you don't know is whether or not you have all the ingredients, so why not ask the fridge? The fridge replies, yes, actually you've got most things, you just need cream. So that will mean a trip to the supermarket. Whilst you're there, you pick up some garlic bread. And because you have garlic bread, you decide to ask the oven to warm up in advance of your arriving home. That was just one small domestic example. But the Internet of Things is more than just smart homes and connected appliances. It scales up to include smart cities. Think of connected traffic signals that monitor traffic flow and utility and smart bins that signal when they need to be emptied. Whilst the number of connected internet devices constantly increases, security concerns are also exponentially multiplied. So ahead of you, you have quite a lot of choices. And so why would that have anything to do with tomatoes? Well, I use tomatoes because I think of it when I go to the supermarket and I see all of those tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes on the vine, plum tomatoes, baby plum tomatoes, heritage tomatoes, beef steak tomatoes. The choices of tomatoes is quite bewildering. And if it's hard to choose tomatoes, then think how hard it is to choose your future career. So when considering your choice of degree, 
think about all of the opportunities that a computing degree would offer you. Hopefully, your motivation for studying computing would include a love of the subject. You really enjoy programming, coming up with solutions, and making computers work for you. You really need to get a job, and there are lots of jobs in the industry, despite what you see. These jobs are for people who have a real fundamental understanding of how computers work, not just end users. Perhaps you might want to change the world, you might want to work at CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, and see how that network of computers has to store petabytes of data. Perhaps you want to make a lot of money. That certainly nearly was possible. Data scientists at the moment can command quite high um, fees for their services. Hopefully what motivates you to choose computing is a bit of all of those things. OK, so let's look at an overview of the programme. Let's look first at the title of the programme, Modular BSc slash MEng with Honours in Computer Science or Information Technology. So if we break that title down a wee bit, modular means basically modular topics that help you to perhaps choose your own route through one of the programmes, choosing things, topics, subjects that interest you. However, it's important to state that the structure of the programme is designed so that the core material is the same at level four. So the programme has two routes. There is a BSc in Computer Science and a BSc in Information Technology. The Computer Science route takes a research and theoretical approach to software development, whilst the Information Technology route has a greater focus on business and the application of software development techniques. If you want to think about it in binary terms, you can think of computer science as being theory and information technology being application. And on graduation, you will be either a professional computer scientist or a professional information technologist. We also offer an integrated master's or MEng. The Integrated Masters is a four-year degree that extends your studies to master's level. It's the highest award for an undergraduate studying in computing in the UK, and we offer it in two formats. You can study full-time, which will take four years, or you can study with a program of work placement, which would take you five years. So before I carry on, let me just take a, a moment to explain the levels that I've been referring to. By the time you reach university, you will have completed level three. Your first year will be level four, second level five, and the final level of the BSc, the Bachelor of Science, is level six. Master's degree goes to one more level, level seven. So most people notice the extra year at MEng level, but don't really appreciate the pros and cons of an MEng versus a BSc. So the MEng course allows you to study computer science at an advanced level and includes modules from our master's degree program. The computer science route offers some additional specialism. A specialism allows you to focus on a particular subject area in detail from level five and into your final year. The BSc Computer Science with Networks allows you to develop a knowledge of the function of both hardware and software aspects of modern network systems. You will acquire an understanding of the principles of operation of a wide variety of network solutions, and you will gain an understanding of the special problems of the development of network systems, including design, implementation, validation, and testing. The BSc Computer Science with Software Engineering will help you to develop the ability to choose suitable tools and techniques for software development, depending on the characteristics of the problem. You will gain an appreciation of good practice in the management of software development as an engineering discipline. 
and you will develop an appreciation of the role of theory in practical applications. The BSc Computer Science with Artificial Intelligence will help you develop an understanding of the theoretical basis of artificial intelligence. You will acquire software engineering skills necessary for the design, implementation and testing of AI systems. And you will experience a range of applications of artificial intelligence and an understanding of their suitability to a problem domain. Level 4 I'm now going to talk to you about the four Level 4 modules that every student on the programme, whether it's on the computer science or the information technology route, takes. I won't describe all levels in this much detail, but I think it's important to get an appreciation of what it would be like at Level 4. This module takes a problem-solving approach to programming. It introduces programming and computing concepts that are applicable in real life in context-relevant scenarios. This module provides a clear concept of modelling and specification of computational systems. Formalisms in modelling and specification are vital for the design, development and operation of computer-based systems. Platforms for Computing covers techniques for storing, manipulating and communicating data and what can be achieved given the constraints of specific platforms. Human Dimensions of Computing introduces the history and major accomplishments of computer science and information technology. It is really vital for a professional practitioner to have an appreciation of the human and social dimensions of computing. Things like user experience, interaction design, inclusivity, accessibility, those kind of things, as well as ethical considerations of what you should and shouldn't do with computers. Level 5 Contemporary Issues 15 Credits Compulsory Database Concepts 15 Credits Compulsory Computer Science Development Exercise 30 Credits Compulsory Algorithms and Data Structures 15 Credits Compulsory Operating Systems and Networks 15 Credits Compulsory Artificial Intelligence 15 Credits Optional Computer Architecture 15 Credits Optional Cognitive and Social Robotics 15 Credits Optional The C Family 15 Credits Optional Project Planning 15 Credits Compulsory User Experience 15 Credits Compulsory Advanced Database Topics 15 Credits Compulsory Information Security Management 15 Credits Compulsory Information Technology Project 30 Credits Compulsory Software Quality 15 Credits Optional Strategic IT Management 15 Credits Optional Advanced Web Scripting 15 Credits Optional Enterprise Systems 15 Credits Optional After your second year, or Level 5, you may choose to proceed straight to your final year. Alternatively, you could take a couple of more options, one being an industrial placement, the other being to study abroad. There are many advantages to these two options. Studying abroad, working abroad, working at home will give you all of those valuable experiences and skills which today's employers really value. So just a few things to say about why you might consider those options. It, yes. <coughs> So just to finish up with a few So just a few reasons why you might consider either of these options. You are more likely to get a better job at the placement company if you do an industrial placement. More than one third of jobs for new graduates go to those who have already worked for that employer. You are more likely to get a good degree and it helps you plan a career path. And also gain those skills, experience, motivation and confidence that today's employers require. Project planning 15 credits compulsory. User experience 15 credits compulsory. Computer systems security 15 credits compulsory. 
Concurrency 15 credits compulsory. Computer Science Project 30 credits compulsory. Artificial Life 15 credits optional. Software Quality 15 credits optional. Embedded Systems Development 15 credits optional. Machine Learning and Neural Computing 15 credits optional. Programming Paradigms 15 credits optional. Quantum Computing 15 credits optional. Mobile Computing 15 credits optional. Project Planning 15 credits compulsory. User Experience 15 credits compulsory. Advanced Database Topics 15 credits compulsory. Information Security Management 15 credits compulsory. Information Technology Project 30 credits compulsory. Software Quality 15 credits optional. Strategic IT Management 15 credits optional. Advanced Web Scripting 15 credits optional. Enterprise Systems 15 credits optional. I just want to take a moment now to explain why I think the industrial placement and many employers think an industrial placement is a really good option for students. When selecting graduate recruits, businesses look for skills and attitudes that will make those recruits effective in the workplace from day one. And work placements or sandwich courses offer a real solution to students who wish to gain those skills. Atop of a graduate recruiter's wish list is an attitude and aptitude for work. The next thing they're looking for is relevant work experience. An industrial placement on the CV looks good. A bit further down their requirements are the degree subject. The degree classification is important to them, but the university attended not so much. Final year. OK, so I mentioned degree classifications there, and I just wanted to make some clarification to what, he, what I meant by degree classification. A first class honours degree is awarded to students whose average grade is 70% or more. An upper second class award, or a 2-1, is awarded to students whose average grade is 60% or more. A lower second class degree, or 2-2, is awarded to students whose average grade is 50% or more. A third class honours degree is awarded to students whose average grade is 40% or more. OK, for a bit of light relief from my hardcore academic stuff, just to let you know that there are some interesting ways you could remember this degree classification. For instance, a first class honours degree is sometimes known as a Jeff or a Damien. That depends, I suppose, on what... Uh, generation you are. An upper second class degree, or 2-1, is also known as an Attila. Mm -hmm. A lower second class degree, or 2-2, is known as a Desmond. And a third class honours degree is known as a Richard III, which I don't think I need to explain. But it's also known as a Vorderman, because Carol Vorderman only got a third class honours degree from Sydney Sussex College. We will support your learning in a number of ways. Each module has a specific area on StudyNet, the university's managed learning environment. Each module will provide a guide that includes learning outcomes, a week-by-week -week guide to topics, the assessment regime, details of teaching staff and their contact details. You will also have a personal tutor who will monitor your academic development and provide pastoral care. The structure of your learning will have the following format. Lectures will be with your entire cohort and modules will have up to one or two lectures a week. Modules have one or two tutorials a week with a group of around 20 to 25 students. Practicals or lab work will also be with your tutorial group and there will be around one to two practicals per week. So an average of five hours per week of contact time 
per module. Another initiative we're very proud of in the school is peer-assisted learning. Peer-assisted learning is an academic support scheme. Students are trained in facilitation and coaching techniques and they plan and deliver support sessions for other students. PAL aims to ease the transition into higher education and to provide support for students by students. Research in the School of Engineering and Computer Science is very important to us. Some of our staff are top researchers in their fields with international reputations. And that will be important to you because new developments inform our taught courses. Entry requirements, 104 UCAS points. We also require GCSE Maths and English Language at grade 4 or above, grade C or above under the old grading structure, International Baccalaureate, 104 points from a minimum of 2 HL subjects at H4 or above, with the remaining points to come from a combination of HL and SL.